Hi, in this lesson I'm going to be showing you a bit more about how to work with the InfoSemantics Rotator Component widget. In the last lesson we looked at the bare basics of what you need to know in order to use the widget. In this lesson we're going to be expanding our knowledge a bit with things such as throwing, mouse wheel and variable binding. So to get started let's have a look at the first interaction for this lesson. And here it is. You're probably uh, familiar with what this is already. It's a Wheel of Fortune. Yes, you can use the rotator widget to rotate the Wheel of Fortune. So we already have a lot of the information we need in order to get this Wheel of Fortune interaction up and working. All I really need to do is go here, find out what the name of this graphic is, and I've called it Wheel 1. Then up the top here, I already have a rotator component widget ready, and I'm going to open it up. And in the rotating object section, I'm going to put in the name of that graphic, wheel 1. I don't need to worry about the initial angle. And the registration point is already in the center, which is where the Wheel of Fortune generally rotates around. So I'm going to click OK. And then go and preview the movie from this slide. And in the output, I have my Wheel of Fortune and I can drag it around and make it spin all I like. Now, what I'd really like to do is I'd like to be able to grab the Wheel of Fortune and then throw it. So as I release my mouse cursor, I'd like it just to keep on spinning and then gradually come to this a stop on a particular number. Now, currently I can't do that. When I release the mouse cursor, it just stops. But I can do it if I enable the throwing feature of the rotator component widget. And that's easy enough to do. I'll just close out of my preview here, double click on the widget in order to open up its settings. And under the optional settings section, there is the allow user input section and a throwing subsection underneath that. If I just enable that, click OK, press F8 to test the movie from this slide, and then try that throwing again in the output, you can see, yeah, it moves and it throws, uh, quite realistically. Let's try that again and give it a nice good spin. Lovely. Okay, now you may notice it's coming to a stop a bit soon. We'd sort of like it to make a few turns and then, you know, gradually come to a stop with more suspense. So in order to do that, all you have to do is go back into the rotator uh, component widget and under the throwing section, there is a friction slider. This allows you to set how fast this throwing is going to come to a stop. If you set it all the way to 100, that's the most ferocious setting. The wheel is practically going to stop instantly. But if you set it all the way to zero, that's the opposite. It's never going to stop. It's just going to keep on spinning and spilling and spinning until you grab it again. I want to set it to something maybe about 15, just here. Uh, click OK, and let's test this and see what the friction is like. So now I'll grab the uh, Wheel of Fortune again and give it a good spin. Oh yeah, that's much better. That feels pretty good. So let's see what I get. I usually get bankruptcy, so ooh, oh, I might get a free spin. Might get a free spin. It's kind of hard to tell, isn't it? I'm going to go for a free spin. I, I, I like that. But I'll use my free spin at a later date. Okay, so that is throwing for the rotator component widget. Now I would like to show you a little bit about variable binding. Now if you've used any of the other component widgets, you'll already be familiar with this section, but let's just do a little review. I'm going to go back up to my first slide here. We showed this a little interaction in the first video. Now what variable binding is, is essentially allows you to connect this rotator interaction with a captivate variable. As you rotate this knob, the captivate variable is going to update to reflect the current value of the knob. And if you change the captivate variable via advanced actions or some other means, then the knob will update to reflect the value as well. So let's have a look at how that works. I already have a captivate variable set up, which I call speed. So I'm just going to type that in speed into the variable binding section in the variable field that has now linked this uh, knob with the captivate variable speed. The min and max values are zero to 100. We'll see what those mean in a sec. I'm just going to click OK to close down. And then I'm going to insert a caption. 
And in the caption, I'm going to add a captivate variable over here in the insert variable section. I'm going to select my speed variable and click OK, just center it, and then put the variable up about here. And then I'll press F4 to test the movie. Now, as I spin my knob, you can see that it is updating that captivate variable. When it's up here at the top, it's got a value of zero because that it's, that's its minimum value. And as I rotate it all the way around, you can see it gradually grows until I get back up to the top again, where it is 100, and then it loops around as I keep on spinning around. Now, if I went into my uh, rotator widget and turned on min max angle, and then clicked OK, then the behavior of this captivate variable is going to change slightly. Now, when the knob is at its minimum angle, that is going to be a, a minimum uh, value for the captivate variable. And as I turn the knob around so it meets its maximum value, then it hits 100 as the maximum value for the captivate variable. And you can see it's not going to rotate past that because that's the idea of the minimum max angle. Okay, so I don't really want that for this interaction. I'm going to turn that off. Now what I'd like to show you is how you can use a button to update the speed variable and that's going to change the position of the knob without us actually grabbing it. So I'm going to go add a button. I'll drag that button up just above the speed value and I'm going to give it a name of change. Oops. Change. Make it a little larger. Okay. And then I'll scroll down to the action section and for on success, that's when we click the button, I'm going to, where is it? Assign the speed variable with 50. So that's going to send the knob to its midpoint, which should be about the bottom of it here. So let's press F4 and test this. So as you can see, I can move my knob around and that's working just fine. It's updating the captivate variable value. But now when I click the button, you can see it immediately sets the knob to that position. Okay, now where this gets really powerful is where you start connecting other component widgets with this same captivate variable. So for example, I've got this second knob over here. If I open up its widget properties, then bind it to the same speed variable with the same min and max values, click OK, and then go and test the movie again. Now when I turn one knob, the other knob is updating to reflect that value. Okay. And if I click the button there, then both knobs are going to move to that value. Okay, and just for the lols, have a look at this. If I go over here, set one of the knobs uh, max values to 50, whereas the other one is at 100, and then test the movie, you can see that for every one turn of my knob here, I'm getting two turns on the other knob. Okay, that's pretty cool. Okay, but for the sake of keeping things consistent, I'm just going to go back in there, set it back to 100. Okay, so you can use the rotator component widgets uh, variable binding to talk with other component widgets, for example, the slider component widget. Let's have a look at how this works. To finish up, we're going to do a rather neat interaction with a thermometer. So here I have my graphic, I've got a thermometer, and then I've got a temperature knob over here, which I've called temp knob. Let's just set up the rotator uh, widget to start with. So I'm going to go in there, I'm going to uh, connect it to the temp knob graphic, and then I'm going to turn the, on the min and max angle. And I only want this uh, knob to rotate in between where it's got that temperature dial there. So I'm going to set its min angle to nine, negative 90 degrees, and its max angle to 90 degrees, positive. Okay, and then click OK. Let's just test that movie and see how it works. Okay, yes, it is now only rotating between there. Okay, now I want to tie this value of the temperature knob into a slider. I've already got the graphics set up for you here for the slider. I'm just going to make them visible on the timeline here. This red highlight box, that's the handle for my slider. It's called mask handle. And this black highlight box behind it, that's the track for the handle. 
And over on the side here, I already have a slider component widget set up. I'm going to drag it onto the stage, so it will now be published uh, with the Captivate output and become active. Let's just double click on its properties, have a quick squiz. We're not going to talk too much about how to set up the rotator component widget because we've got other lessons on that. Uh, so it's just going to be a vertical slider. The handle for the slider is going to be the mask handle object. The mask track object is going to be the track for the slider. And I've told the widget to automatically hide that at the start of the movie. And interestingly enough, this slider is connected to a captivate variable called temperature with a min and max value of 100. Okay. And if I go back into my knob widget and I also connect it to that temperature variable and then test the movie by pressing F8. Ah, I can't see it, my uh, slider there because I've actually gone here and turned, made it invisible in output. I'll just go select it, turn on the visible in output checkbox, publish again. Okay, now you see that when I spin my knob, that handle is moving up and down. Now, that doesn't really look too attractive. It's just this big red square appearing out of nowhere. What I'd really like is if I just hide my uh, two graphics here, that's the mask there. Okay, you see that I've got this nice graphic behind here, which is showing the temperature of mercury inside the thermometer there. What I'd really like is to have only the part of this image that is covered by this red uh, handle to be visible. If the red handle is, for example, uh, moved down somewhat so that it's over here, then this part of the thermometer will be invisible while as everything being covered by the handle will be visible. And in order to do that, what we need is a mask, which we have the masquerade widget for. So I'm just going to pull my InfoSemantics masquerade widget onto the slide here. And we'll just check what the name of the uh, temperature gauge is there, which is called masky. And the mask handle we already know that name. So I'll just open up the masquerade widget and we can see I've already got that mask set up. So the mask handle, the bit that moves up and down with the slider is going to hide the masky, which is the graphic of the uh, temperature gauge. Okay, let's test this movie by going uh, pressing F8 and we'll see how it works. So now as I move my knob around, you can see that the temperature is going up and down as it is masked by the slider handle. Okay, that's pretty cool, but we do have one problem. At the moment, when my knob is in the red area, then the temperature is at its lowest temperature. But when I move it into the blue area, then the temperature is at its highest. We sort of expect this to work the other way around. And to get it to do so is really simple. All we need to do is reverse the polarity. What does that do? Okay, let's just jump back over here to my two knobs. Uh, this is the easiest place to see it. So you remember how when we were rotating one knob, the other knob was updating to reflect its position and they were always keeping the same value. Well, what I can do is go into one of my knobs and in the uh, variable binding section, turn on reverse polarity. And now when I test the movie, instead of the two knobs facing the same way when I turn them, they will now face the opposite way. Okay, so when I turn this knob around to about 90 degrees here, then the other knob is at negative 90 degrees. And altogether, it looks a bit like the Cookie Monster's eyes, I think. Okay, that's a bit creepy. Let's move on. Uh, move back over to this slide. So all we need to do in order to get this uh, knob to accurately portray uh, what the temperature gauge is showing is just double click inside of it in the variable binding section, turn on reverse polarity, click OK, test the movie. And now when the variable is in the blue section and I turn it over into the red section, the temperature gauge is updating to show the relevant temperature. Okay, one last bonus thing before we leave off this lesson is under the optional settings, I you know, underneath throwing there is also the mouse wheel section. If I turn that on, click OK, test the movie. I can now use my uh, mouse wheel in order to turn the knob and update the uh, thermometer. 
Okay, so if you want to learn a bit more about how to use the mouse wheel, that section is exactly to the same as the uh, mouse wheel section of the slider component widget. So just go and have a look at the lesson of the slider component widget that deals with mouse wheel, and you'll know how to use it for the knob. Okay, so that is a bit more information about how to use the InfoSemantics slider component widget. I hope you found it useful and it's given you some ideas of how to use it in your course.